If you really loved me, you would do what I say without questioning it. You're nothing without me. Your friends are just jealous of what we have. Your family doesn't understand you the way I do. I'm the only one who knows what's best for you. You're crazy. No one's going to believe you. You're lucky to have this job. I could easily get you fired. I heard rumors about you. You better watch your back. No one's going to love you the way I do. After everything I've done for you, you're still so ungrateful. These are just few examples capturing what it's like to be in an abusive relationship or a toxic workplace. And I came here today to share my knowledge on how damaging can toxic relationships and workplaces be for your immune system and how chronic stress can actually lead to cancer. I work as a clinical immunologist and a researcher in the field of cancer immunology. And in my clinical practice, I often deal with people having stress-induced immune deficiencies. That means that their immune system does not work properly and they suffer from frequent or complicated infections. Sometimes when I dig deeper into the real cause of their stress, I realize there's much more to be fixed than just the immune system. I met patients being forced into diets by their partners. I met patients with sleep deprivation because they were frequently interrogated by their partners during the night. And I met patients who began to cry in front of me when I asked them about their work and workplace. And I will tell you today what happens with your immune cells when you're experiencing long-term stress. But first, let me briefly explain the whole concept of stress which is generally divided into three parts, the stressor, the perception of stress, and the stress response. So the stressor is the thing that causes your stress, right? And this could be anything, school exams, deadlines, important meetings, that can largely contribute to your stress levels. However, relationships are one of the major sources of chronic stress. And when I say toxic relationships, there's enormous amount of personality traits and abusive behaviors in a person, let's say in a partner, husband, family member, or a colleague, that may harm not just your mental health, but also your physical health. To give you a couple of examples of these behaviors, these may include controlling what you do or say, isolating you from your family or friends, going through your phone and personal stuff, insulting you, threatening you, twisting what you say, or making you feel guilty or ashamed for being who you are. And these behaviors are primarily motivated by gaining control and power over you, but they also affect your immune cells. So the stressor is the first part. The second part is the perception of stress. The perception of stress happens in your brain, in specific areas of your brain. And how we perceive stress is highly individual. It has a lot to do with your genetics, your age, your personal experiences, and other environmental factors. So there are huge differences in the perception of stress. And the third part is the stress response. Now, there are four types of responses, fight, flight, freeze and fawn. Fight and flight is a well-known concept. Freeze and fawn were described relatively recently, where freeze has been observed, for example, as a pattern um, seen in rape victims, and fawn was described as a pattern of codependent behavior in cases of intimate partner violence. And um, let's say that um, your, your mental health might be severely affected uh, with, with stress, but the stress leads to thing that your body responds. I will, I will keep this simple. I will stick to the fight or flight. So once you're confronted with the stressor, your whole body starts acting under the influence of stress hormones. 
And there are many stress hormones and neurotransmitters involved, but let's say the most important ones are cortisol and adrenaline. And what happens is that no matter what the stressor is, your body responds to the stressor as if it was a predator. Let's say a lion trying to hunt you down. So this is evolutionary mechanism. So your heart starts racing, your blood pressure goes up, your glucose levels go up, and this all happens so that you have the energy, the muscle strength, and the blood supply to either fight the lion or to run away. But at the same time, stress hormones suppress things that aren't necessary at the moment, like digestion or ovulation. And as you might probably guess, all these physiological mechanisms lead to the fact that chronically stressed people tend to have more diabetes, hypertension, fertility problems, or metabolic syndromes. See, the problem with the stressors that we face today is that they don't have clear ending. So with the lion, there are two possible outcomes. You either run from the lion, the lion disappears, and the stressor is no longer there, so the stress response ends, or you're being caught by the lion, eventually killed, so you're no longer there and the stress response ends. And this is very different from what we experience in our lives. Let's say you're bullied by a coworker, and you might know these types of entitled people who believe in their superior status, and these might undermine your projects, intentionally leave you out of important meetings, or spread rumors about you. And um, let's say that if you're experiencing this on a daily basis, your body triggers the stress response every single day with all the consequences, blood pressure, glucose levels, and so on. But what happens with your immune cells, right? So that's the question. Well, important fact, all immune cells in your body have receptors for stress hormones. That being said, that each and every immune cell in your body knows whether you're stressed or not. That's quite scary, right? And your immune system is very smart, so it responds to the stressor in a similar manner to other organs and systems in your body. And it responds to the stressor as if it was the lion. So your immune system prepares for two possible things, injury and infection. And there are these cells that we call innate immune cells, and these are known for being capable of responding very quickly to whatever occurs. And these cells cause inflammation and wound healing. So actually, during acute stress response, these cells traffic from your bone marrow and they get prepared in your bloodstream in case you get injured. But then there are other cells, adaptive immune cells. We call them T cells and B cells. These are very smart highly sophisticated cells, they have cell memory. B cells produce antibodies to protect you against a wide range of pathogens, and T cells have highly specialized weapons to fight cancer. And although this description is oversimplified, T cells and B cells are mostly suppressed during stress response. So this works amazingly if it's just short term. But if you're experiencing long-term stress, well, let's say you tend to have high levels of inflammation in your body, and at the same time, other cells stop responding at all, and you're not quite protected against infection and cancer. Why? Well, let's say that cancer isn't really immediate threat when your body thinks there's a lion ahead. So this is the stress response. And when you search the scientific studies, it's a little bit easier to trust data from animal models because, as I said, the perception of stress is highly individual, but in animal models you can actually secure the same age, the same genetics, the same life experiences, and you can cause stress to these animals and measure the outcomes. So there's an American study that was published in 2022 evaluating social stress in mice. And what they did was that the researchers kept placing one aggressive, dominant male mouse into a cage with a bunch of happy, usually calm mice, 
every day for a certain time period. And over time, the calm mice became very nervous, especially every day around the time when the aggressive male was coming. And they became chronically stressed. So this is a very similar situation to when you're going home to an abusive partner, then you get nervous every day around the end of your shift because you know you will have to go somewhere where you don't feel safe. And so what they found in the study was that um, the immune cells of these socially stressed mice were completely exhausted, specifically T cells. They did not respond to infection with tuberculosis. And interestingly, the older the mouse was, the more damaging the effect of social stress there was for, for her immune system. And um, there's another study published in German study published in 2013 evaluating happy teachers versus unhappy teachers suffering from work-related stress. And in this study, they not only found that the unhappy teachers have significantly higher levels of inflammatory markers in their blood, but also when exposed to another stressor, the uh, immune response of the unhappy teacher is much more impaired. This clearly shows that when you're suffering from chronic stress, you're not quite capable of responding properly to any additional stressful event. And so there are many studies proving that if you're suffering from immunological disorder, like autoimmunity, immune deficiency, or allergy, stress will intensify your symptoms and possibly affect your prognosis. There's an interesting study, American one, published in the 90s, showing that women who are being criticized daily by their husbands have much faster progression of rheumatoid arthritis. That's severe autoimmune disease. Uh, another study, German one, from, uh, published in 2006, showed that kids under the age of two who are living in households where high-conflict divorce is happening have much higher chances of developing atopic eczema as compared to kids from normal households. There is also an American study from 2018 showing that arguments and conflicts in marriage impair your immune functions, and the longer you stay in such marriage, the worse damage there is. There are several studies in patients with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, showing that these patients have very low responses to vaccinations, and some of them don't respond to vaccines at all. And also, there are studies in the field of wound healing proving that family support and love from your partner significantly decreases the risk of infectious complications after surgery. So, to sum it up, I'd like to say that although the perception of stress is highly individual, there is clear evidence that chronic stress leads to inflammation and affects your ability to fight infection and cancer. And I really don't mean to sound cheesy, but you only live once. So remember that every immune cell in your body knows whether you're stressed or not. So if you find yourself in a relationship where nothing you ever do is good enough, where your personal freedom is in jeopardy, and where your thoughts and insights are not respected or considered important, find the strength to leave. And if you're not ready to leave, please seek support. Talk to people who care about you. Talk to a therapist. Find professionals. And if you already left, but you're still struggling, please be patient and believe that recovery and empowerment takes time, but it's not impossible. Trust me. Thank you for your attention.